Hello there, Standing Stones. Rebecca, how's everybody doing on this Wednesday evening? So, good evening there, Tracy. How are you doing? I'm glad you're doing well. Nice. Yeah, you're muted. As Tracy unmutes himself here, we'll give him a second. All right, how's that? Oh, much better. All right. I think I'm going to join from my phone here, Chris. I, I seem to be having issues on. All right, not a problem. Give me a minute here. So good. So good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition. Give Tracy a few seconds here. And now all of a sudden, I am starting to blink out. That's weird. Let me kick him off here. And uh, I don't know why I'm starting to blink out. And we got some uh, some guests. Uh, Nat and Mike, welcome. So introduce Thank yourselves you. and tell us about uh, We Are Paranormal. I'm starting to freeze up now, so I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Huh. I see that. So yeah. Just, yeah, just go ahead and no. run with the show. Look like it looked like my okay. neck is cranking up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, my name is Nate. I'm one of the co-founders of We Are Paranormal. Uh, we've been a group for past was it four years now? Say about four years. We've been on four years now. Um, I've got about twelve, about eleven years experience now in the paranormal, and uh, that's uh, we kind of decided we 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 met at a location and uh, decided to start our own group, and uh, here we are, and just going to continue to you know bring evidence to everybody, and that's what we do. Absolutely, and I'm Mike. I am the second co-founder of We Are Paranormal. I have about 12, 13 years experience in the paranormal. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. Welcome back, Tracy. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, hey, uh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, no, no, awesome. Excited to have you guys on here. Uh, so I'm kind of reading through your guys' bio, uh, you know, and you guys kind of explain a little bit of what you've been going on, going through. So if you don't mind, take us through what got each of you into uh, into this paranormal field that, that we're all in. Uh, sure. Um, I, I, you want me to go first? You go okay. So I got into it. Uh, I, used to, I was in the funeral industry for 13 years. And uh, even before that, I would um, experience certain things at my house where I grew up. Um, didn't really know it was paranormal because, you know, it was a long time ago when I was uh, younger. And uh, uh, but it just kind of as I kind of seen things and felt things, um, started to realize, oh, wow, this is uh, this is some paranormal stuff. Seeing people that would be there and then disappear sometimes and hearing things, feeling things and just kind of decided, you know what? this is very interesting and I, I really like this. So I decided to get into it more. And the more, you, the more I dug and got into it, the more interested I am. And we'll see here I am. <laughs> so I, I see you playing jokes in the funeral home. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. We've jo the, to be in the funeral industry. I don't know if anybody <laughs> here has been in the funeral industry. You got to have a sense of humor, not a sense of humor in the, in the sense of with, you know, people that have passed, uh, but just in general, because you're around people who are very uh, um, down and their their energy is low and, and you've got to be there to walk them through it. But yes, uh, there are times. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to elaborate on that? Uh, I... <laughs> There's been it's nothing, it's nothing to I'm be joking. like, uh, I, I could, but I, yeah, it was, there so was never my great anything. grandmother was over a funeral home, she was a caretaker. Okay, so my oh, parents, okay, and they played jokes, my dad did, and uh, <laughs> so I, I grew up with the, that around, and that, sure. ours was Ratterman's. So yeah. I said it on the air, ladies and gentlemen. So I know exactly what you did because I can actually see you doing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm not going to elaborate, I'm not going to put them on the spot again, but yeah. I know I see yeah. you doing it. Oh yeah, no, it's a it's a thing. Uh, you don't talk. Yeah, yeah, you got me. <laughs> yes, sir. Next. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> oh yeah. All right, Mike, your turn. I'll 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 I'll, I'll leave you alone, Mike. I promise. I don't, I don't have any cool stories like that, but uh, 
mine's just the usual, you know, I grew up, um, I actually lived in West Virginia when I was younger and, uh, we lived on a, in a, on a old farm and I'd seen a lot of stuff that made me question a lot of things. And that's what got me into paranormal. Okay. Okay. So, um, what, when did, uh, well, hey, let's, when did you guys meet? How did you guys start this? Um, well, we're both, we both knew uh, a person who unfortunately is uh, since the past um, at the old Baraboo Inn um, in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Uh, his name was BC Farr and we both knew him well. And um, there's an event there and we just, we, uh, we met there and he said, you know what? We kind of had some things. I had a different group and he was kind of transitioning or had been out of it for a while. And he said, let's get a group together of, you know, and, and, uh, kind of do our own thing and we have a you know we try to be different and unique and we try to bring things to light to everybody and for what we capture and evidence so said so, you know what let's form this group we uh decided to to form and here we are you know that's interesting it's been, a, it's been interesting got to see a lot or, of things so far so so um so what, what were you guys in any uh any type of uh any other uh paranormal teams before this yeah, yeah. I, I was with a team for a couple of years um, called Paranormal Encounters Wisconsin. Yeah. And, um, yep. and they just kind of, a couple of the members got sick and we just kind of, I had some things go on in my life and I actually had some, I had an attachment from a place that I went to and it kind of messed with me for a few years so i actually yeah, <laughs> yeah so go. i actually uh i actually don't let me get my holy water we'll all be yeah, right? <laughs> so i actually stepped away from the paranormal for a couple of years and then uh just kind of got back into it i missed it yeah so, i was a, so, oh, go ahead. what happened to the uh to that attachment if you don't mind um, i think tracy's looking for one. Oh, i don't want one okay. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i uh i didn't realize what was going on um I knew that I didn't feel right. And uh, actually, after I met Nate, he was frequenting a shaman. And I decided to pay her a visit. And she informed me that there was something on me. And she got rid of it for me. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, before this, I was uh, at another group that I had formed. It was. Uh, it was called RIP or I was a ritual investigators of the paranormal and uh, the group kind of just uh, kind of dissipated. Everybody's just busy with schedules and things like that. And so um, just decided that uh, we'll kind of got to do less and less and it just got exhausting and, you know, uh, trying to do everyday life. And then that it just got to be too much and took a break for a little bit. And then we ended up starting this and, so yeah oh that's cool that's cool yeah um so so wap <laughs> yeah the reason why we did that we decided on we are paranormal yeah. and then wap obviously people know for other reasons um <laughs> it's more a marketing thing i guess not marketing but just you know people look like people come up to us and like I absolutely love that shirt or that hoodie or yeah. whatever we have on. Um, we got to meet actually some pretty cool people in like the airport. Um, like some run-ins with some pretty, pretty awesome people we got to meet. And now we have a pretty good relationship with them. Um, and it actually got us into a few different places that uh, we probably wouldn't have. Well, maybe we would have gotten into it eventually at certain locations, but got it's, easier. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. Just, there was a good opening mm -hmm. uh, transition to start talking about it. Oh yeah, it's just an automatic conversation starter. What's yes. Like, What's that? Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I've met i met a lot. Okay, I've met a lot of people. I, never mind. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> never never mind. Heads turn. Yes. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> people are like Grizzly. What? Never mind, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> You'll yeah. figure out later. Yeah. So what because when oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, Chris. No. Mm -hmm. Hey, so what do you guys um uh, you know when when you're going to uh walk us through 
one of your recent hunts what 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 did you guys take with you do you say prayers you know stuff like that what what, what do you do to prepare for your hunt uh prior obviously prior before you start yeah. sure uh i prepare like weeks before if, especially if it's a place like we just recently went to which was bobby mackey's uh, mentally i try to be prepared to protect myself when we go to these places yeah I, i'm i'm kind of similar it's, it's all mindset for me but also just kind of you have the ability some of i mean if you've been doing it for a while you have the ability to kind of block yourself from certain things and sometimes it's successful sometimes not but you know before and after we definitely do uh uh you know work on our energy and push anything out that could be and cut any cut any cords any attachments anybody that wants to you know any contracts that they've uh uh done with us at the investigation get rid of it so um we've uh after you've been doing it a while i feel like you can kind of feel it a little bit better or know a little bit more uh be more mindful um but in the beginning i mean i was that's why i had to go see a shaman a lot because i was going home oh what's this and, you know attachment coming home with me so um yeah so it's just a thing i think after a while you kind of get used to it understand it better so yeah the, yeah the main reason i ask is you know the newer people that might be watching they you know, just getting into the paranormal, we try, you know, obviously we try to support them as, as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, absolutely. They like to take those ideas too and, and, and understand, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. we do ask different, you know, our guests that, that are in the, yeah. in the investigation part of it. Um, so, so you guys did Mackey's, you, you, you've done some other places. What, what would you say together? I'm going to start off with together. What, what would you say is the, the creepiest place you've been there, been to a, and B, what's the creepiest place that scared the heck out of you, if there is any? Mm. <laughs> um, I think with the, the the creepiest place, I don't, I don't know if it's creepy, but just uh, to me, Mackey's was a huge was was big. It was Mackey's uh, was an eye opener. Yeah, it was an eye opener. Was an eye um, opener. but as far as like, um, what was the other thing? The other like just kind of freaked us out i don't know if i ever got scared but the experience we had at missouri state penitentiary in the gas chamber mm -hmm. was uh something i never experienced before what what like, happened there um we both decided it was a great idea for each one of us to to put the other one in the gas chamber and shut the door um so <laughs> We actually have this on our Facebook Live still. Guess who went first? Yeah, he went first. Uh, so I, when I went, I felt, I, I felt like all these different emotions. Like I felt guilt. I felt anger. I felt like I was, like I couldn't breathe. Like I was everything a person would feel. But then I felt the sense of innocence. It was weird. It was crazy. And I cried like a little baby afterwards. I'll be completely mm -hmm. honest, um, because it just it messed it messed with me for a while. So, yeah, it was insane. Uh, but we're we want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you feel inside of there? Give me more. Give me more. I, <laughs> yeah. I felt the same. I just it was like an overwhelming uh, feeling. Just there was you felt so many emotions, and you know you felt like he said you felt anger, you felt sadness, you felt you know innocence. It was it was overwhelming. Yeah, and there's a there's a certain gentleman uh, who w was in there that I also in his like there's pictures of the people on the wall that that were uh, in the gas chamber, and there was one in particular that I didn't really see, and I had a vision of it, and when I got out, I seen and I like did some research on him, and uh, he was accused of um, he was accused of sleeping with a married woman, um, and he was put. And then she was killed. Um, and so it kind of was like, well, how do we know back then that he really did that? What did the husband find out? Like, mm -hmm. so just it was just weird. I don't know. Like, I just had to dig into it a little bit, but I don't want to get too crazy about it. But it was it was different. It was different. So. So That's what what um, something else that you know, the, the newbies like to uh, not newbies, but the, the newer people like to, to know about is what, what type of equipment? Number one, what's your go to equipment? Number two, what's your your whole equipment stuff that you take with you to your hunts? 
Um, yeah. Grab, yeah, oh, yeah, he's going to grab one. So Mike built something called a Bugsy box. It's a portal uh, mm. portal box. Um, he's actually going to grab it right now and show you if you want to see it. Um, Doesn't Mike build a lot of things? <laughs> yeah. So Mike, this is, I'm telling you, Mike, we, we've been to – do you not do conferences? I've, I've been to a few, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. We had we we've been to a conference together. You I'm do look you. really familiar. Yeah. So I'm sure we've met somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So that's the Bugsy boxes he's built, uh, and uh, it's a communication device. And we've we've uh, we've had quite a few things come through that. Um, that's one of the big things we use. We use uh, we don't do it too crazy, but we use like REM pods. Um, we like the rope light on the floor. Um, what else do we use? Uh, the oh, there's I, an IDC, yeah, the IDC. direct link IDC it was made yeah, by Austin Maynard. Uh, yeah. It's just a direct link. It's it's a pretty cool little device you can carry around in your hand. Um, we use the the new SB7. Yeah, the SB7 Pro, mm. which is really cool. It's really fast. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's some of, there's, there's a couple of grids that we haven't used in a while. That we're gonna start getting into again and use, um, but. Otherwise, I think that's it. I mean, we, yeah. our bodies. Yeah, our bodies is for bodies sure. Yeah. I always tell when you got something going on. So, thank you, thank you. So, so you guys get in there, and you got that box, which is awesome. That, that's pretty cool. Yeah. What What evidence is is like the most hard, compelling evidence that you've gotten that that you're like, man, that's one hundred percent spirit ghost whatever so we just recently went to um uh a place in fall river massachusetts um it's it's a place uh i mean we can just tell them right yeah, we can tell. it's called miss lizzie's coffee it's right next to the lizzie borden house uh nobody has ever investigated there and we were allowed to do that and that was by chance me going in and just talking to the owner i went in there with my kids and then he says there's a Another Borden family uh, tragedy that isn't as well known as the Lizzie Borden. And um, I, I can just tell you a story real quick if you guys want. It, uh, the great aunt of Lizzie Borden killed her two children in the basement in a cistern and uh, then allegedly took her own life um, with a straight razor. Um, her husband's straight razor. Yeah, her husband's straight razor. So... Um, so we went there and it, the things that we had come through and the evidence, like we hear a lot of things from the Bugsy box. Um, we literally heard her say, I didn't do it. I didn't like, she literally said, I didn't kill myself. It's a woman's voice. Obviously way back when we wouldn't know what her voice sounds like. So she told us who it was. We asked her who, so her husband's name is Ludwig, which is a, not an unknown name. So you can't really mistake in that for something else. So we asked who, who was the one, if you didn't do it, who was the one responsible for this? And literally a female's voice through said Ludwig. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's been pretty crazy. We've been trying to, um, um, trying to, we, we have a video, we're putting a video together of the evidence of that, but, uh, um, it was insane. It was like, what did we uncover? Like, did she not do this and then got blamed for it? Cause this guy had four wives. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so. That was a that was pretty cool. Um, we've had a lot of like uh, voices through the camera, just the camera audio itself. Mm -hmm. um, that's been pretty cool too. So there's a lot of different things. I think the most compelling compelling evidence we've ever gotten through the Bugsy Box though was when we were doing Washer County, mm -hmm. and I started feeling sick to my oh, stomach, yeah. and I I turned towards him and I go like this yeah. to tell him my stomach hurt, and right when I say say that a woman comes through and goes you're gonna feel sick yeah like immediately yeah it was literally cool. it, it was at the same time yeah so <laughs> yeah it was pretty cool and, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of things that were that were said there that mm -hmm. yeah so pretty cool um, thing yeah no that's awesome um so nathan yep you uh you grew up in a haunted house what what yeah. tell us about that what was that like and what and what happened there so I didn't realize it when I was growing up, but I'd always get this weird feeling, these goosebumps, like the feeling of not being there by myself when my, you know, my dad was gone and my stepmom. 
And I come to find out, uh, there's there's a portal on the steps of my parents, my dad's house. He still has it, and I actually have investigated there. He asked me to because you shouldn't really investigate and stir up stuff. But there's a portal there, and we've got uh, my stepmom's uh, brother who died, uh, who had passed. We got his voice, actual voice. She heard it, and um, there's through the Bugsy box. She was like, "Oh wow, I just heard my brother's voice." And then her best friend, who passed from uh, unfortunately from uh, from cancer, um, my dad had gotten out of the shower and he felt somebody grab his butt. And nobody was in the room. And so he's not, he, this, my dad's a 70, he'll be 74 this year. So he's not somebody who's going to be like, hey, like, so he call, he knows what I do. And he calls me and he says, can you come and just see what's going on? So uh, we think it was her best friend who passed because she had a crush on my dad. So she grabbed his butt and I caught her on the SLS camera as well, uh, upstairs hiding in the closet. And I said, I, I see you. She took off. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know that would uh, that would tell me get the holy water ready. Ain't <laughs> I got it right here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> you know that that would happen to me, and and my wife would still get mad at me. Because, <laughs> right. What the hell? I would anoint her. <laughs> yes, get mad at me. Somebody touch uh, my booty. Hey, yeah, my fault. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So that was like. So I didn't really like. I would see certain things or like, you know, you felt like I saw things in the corner of my eye, but you're, you know, I was younger, so I didn't know any better. And so, but thinking back, I'm like, wow, that was, that's crazy. But yeah. so what about the shadows in your house? Let's talk about that. Um, So I would see certain things in the corner of my eye. Like I would see, you know, you see, then it's like, but as I, when I was younger, like you, I didn't know anything about this. So I'd see something and I'd go to look and I'm like, what the heck was that? So, um, I've so when I investigated and I asked if this is a portal, like this is people come and go, and it's cool. And like right behind the house is a cemetery as well, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it or what. But uh, um, I asked and I said yes. So there's numerous voices that come through, there's different people. Um, so I would see, but I would see that, but I didn't realize what it was. I was like, is somebody here? Like that's weird. But as a kid, like younger, you know, even like you know, preteen or into my early teens, like, I was like, I don't know, like, you know, you didn't think about that stuff. So what about the noises you heard? Would you brush that off to? Um, I would just say the house is old and it's creaking. <laughs> All right, that was the go-to. That's the go -to. Yeah, that's my dad. My dad would tell me that. So, ah, the house is just settling. You'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm glad my room's downstairs and everybody else's is upstairs. So thank you. Now we know who's loved more. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, have you, uh, when you went back to uh, uh, the portal, Yeah. you know, your dad asked you to come back to do it. I mean, did you tell them the results and, and everything that you were oh, they were They were sitting right there. Oh, okay. They listened to the whole thing with me. I actually recorded it too. So I have some of the audio um, where my stepmom kind of, Freaked out. She's like, oh my God, that's my brother. <laughs> and yeah. Then she, yeah. So <laughs> Samantha wants to know is what are y'all's best EVPs that's recorded since you're talking about that? Ooh. Uh mine was at the Velisca Axe murder house. Yeah. Yep. Um get the little kids. I, I, my, I didn't have a battery in there. I'd play yeah. it. Um, but we caught the uh the two little girls that were not a part of the family. Um, they were kind of afraid of. They were afraid of me. Afraid of Nate, and they were kind of. Well, I felt one of them grab my leg. Like she would like when he walked in the room, she came over and like grabbed my leg. Like she was afraid. Yeah. But she uh, she came through the. Um, I told her I, I put a REM pod on the bed, and I was like, "If you want to communicate with us, you can touch the antenna on this thing and make this light up." And I was like, "Okay." And she was like, okay, okay. Like we caught Yeah, like, caught her voice saying, there. okay, okay, yeah. Yep. And then wow. I was like, I was like, I was telling him I was starting to feel it in my stomach. And I was like, I gotta get out of here. And she came through again and she's like, Okay, okay, okay. Like that through the thing. Like she was like, Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty awesome, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so Mike, um, we, we dove a little bit into this earlier, but, you know, why, why do you feel that spirits are so sensitive to follow you around? 
uh, how long have you noticed that happening to you? <laughs> My whole life. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why do you think that that is? Well, I think I kind of, well, when I went to the shop and she kind of explained it to me a little bit, it, she just told me that basically I, my light was so bright that the, the, the spirit that was attached to me, <clears throat> she explained it that my light was so bright that the spirit, so the, the spirit that attached to me was mentally handicapped. So he didn't know any better, but my light was so bright that he thought I was the light that he was supposed to go to, like he thought I was God and, and attached to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just uh, my demeanor. I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty laid back and just, um, that, that could be my only explanation. We had a, a shaman on here not too long ago, and her belief is attachments, correct me if I'm wrong, Grizzly, I thought she said that uh, attachments were, something that could have happened in a past life now that that is a possibility it's possible oh, yeah. yeah yes that, that's a possibility anybody can get attachments right mm -hmm. whether they're good or negative attachments yeah uh yep. so you know whether it's somebody that's crossed over or not crossed right or yep. it's something that's not been born or not a creature or an eminent mm -hmm. object of this earth or not this human. plane so, yeah yep. not human thank you mm -hmm. yeah so yeah yeah that's so interesting, you know, like to it's not cool to have a bad attachment on you. Obviously, it's like um, it's a it's, it's something different. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever experienced that, but uh, you just don't feel like the same. You don't feel like yourself. And um, but it's just the the dynamic of it is so interesting because it's like who how many people are walking around this earth with attachments and don't even know it. They just think they have the worst luck in the world. Oh, yeah. You never know. Who knows? You know, I agree. I 100 percent agree. I was told I was told by um, I had a long story short, I had an Indian that or a Native American that was attached to me. And and just yeah. like Mike, I, I went to someone and, and was told what to do and how to how to get rid of it. And I haven't seen it since. in I think three or four years now. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But then when she brought that up the other day about or uh, the last couple shows, whenever she was on about it being uh could have been a past life i thought man that, that that's pretty interesting if i was native american in the past you know so yeah yeah, yeah. it's definitely interesting for sure um yeah it's uh it's so, so let's let's dive into grizzly's world here of cryptids yeah so you guys are in wisconsin and yep. I know Wisconsin has 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 some, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kentucky, that's where, where Grizz is at. And you guys, you guys have been down there as you had talked before. Yeah. Yep. So, what what are your thoughts on uh, cryptids? Uh, not and not just Bigfoot, but well, let's start off with Bigfoot. What's your thought on Bigfoot? <laughs> well, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm reading your all's minds. I, I hate to say it. Yeah. He's out there. Yeah, I, I, I definitely believe this. I do. No, I do believe that. You don't want to tell the truth. It's all right. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I honestly no, I believe, do. I, believe, I do believe it. that. I, I do believe, believe in it. I don't know to what degree, like, because uh, you see videos and stuff, and so but you get people, you know, you get both sides of it, like, oh, that's fake, and that's fake because of this, this, and this. And it's like, I don't know. Like, do I believe there could be something out there like Bigfoot? Absolutely. Uh Yes, there are a lot of hoaxers. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So it's it makes you like um, makes you skeptical, but at the same time, like it wouldn't surprise me if that makes sense. No, yeah. agreed. Have you guys ever done a Bigfoot hunt? I have not. No, I they don't want to. No, uh, we would. You you let us bring a UTV. We'll we'll go because then we can get out of there quick. <laughs> when, are you coming, when are you coming back to Kentucky? Uh, we're we'll coming back the end of February, but we can always make a special trip. All right, we'll we'll schedule it. All right, yeah. Heck yeah. You got places that take the UTV that go do that without? Or is oh it gonna yeah. Be, oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Let's roll then. Yeah, Let's we'll roll. get something figured out. Oh yeah, absolutely. So that's so, so. Then then you roll into the other cryptids like uh, the Mothman, mm -hmm. uh, Dogman, stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming your thoughts are probably the same as that. I mean, anything anything is is possible, but uh, evidence is for lack of it or 
for lack of a better word, it's almost lacking to an extent. There is some out there. Grizz, Grizzly had showed showed me a uh, a great video of a Bigfoot cloaking itself to to look like uh, the nature around it, but you could see there was something there. So I thought, oh, man, yeah, that's tell pretty... it like it is. It damn looked like Predator. Yeah, yeah it oh, really? Really like Predator. Yeah, we had like, wow. this girl, and I can't remember her name, Catherine uh, Denise Standing Stones. What was her name? Uh, dang on, you would have to put me on the spot. But she was out in 2014, and I've got. I mean, don't ask me why, but I got iPods, right, back then. Yeah. But she had one taped to her walking stick, and uh, she had people on her property, and she saw a flashlight. Thank you, uh, Cryptic Cowboy. Barb Shoot, she's got it on her YouTube channel. And she saw a flash of light, mm -hmm. and she's like, what was that? And everyone's like, what? And uh, she caught something, and they thought she was crazy. So they went mm -hmm. back to her house, and they put it up on the big screen, and they slowed it down. And this damn thing, I'm telling you, it, it looked like a, something went in front of the, you know, like the sun, like when you yeah. go out hunting, right? Yep. You know, like something flew over, and it went like this. It flashed. And then when they slowed it down, it was like, what the hell? What is that? And it looked like predator really? now they went back to that spot and they've got tracks i don't remember what size thank you everybody saying barb shoot i can't remember what track what size tracks they were but people in in the cinematography and everything try to debunk this video and the video was untouched now really? back then they didn't have software to go in there to manipulate this video on her eye on her ipod yep, and yep. uh i mean it's legit now, yeah. since that video has been published, other people has been seeing things in the woods that's like the shimmering man. Have you ever heard that? Mm -hmm. The shimmering effect. Know. Yes. Then that's sure. what that's what they're capturing. So I mean it, I mean it's legit. Yeah. And let me tell you something. When I saw that video, it scared the hell out of me. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was like, damn. I mean, because how many times have we been out in the woods, ladies and gentlemen, and yeah. we hear stuff, but we never see it. Mm -hmm. yeah this makes sense right and oh, yeah. you know i mean how was the predator movie back in the late 80s early 90s yes oh yeah yep. That's and crazy. they're trying to tell us something <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah no i'm uh i haven't gotten into it a, a ton uh that like that kind of stuff i've seen videos and stuff like that i'm always i'm always interested in looking at a video so if you ever have a video, you can share it. I'll, I'll definitely take a look. I'd like man, to I got see stuff it. on my trail cameras. We don't know what really? the hell it is. Some people really? say it's dog man. Another one says it's Obama old Bigfoot uh, oh, down wow. two different days. So, yeah, I got 37 trail cameras I'm going to get tomorrow. Oh, wow. Uh, that's been out since October. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what's left of them. I mean, they're cable tied to the trees. Nobody goes back there. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I have no idea. So, well, well, that cloaking video could make a, a good case for why there isn't much evidence out there, right? Uh, well, the, day, they cloak, you know, stuff like so, that. So, you know, they, they say these creatures are in between six to 10 to 12 feet tall, right? Mm -hmm. Six, seven, 800 pounds. And, and you think, as, as a human mm -hmm. being, how can something like this stay hidden? And which I agree with that. Yeah. That but how many it. times have we heard people say in the woods that they see it behind a tree? Or it runs behind a tree, or it's behind a tree, and it just disappears. Mm -hmm. mm. Where does it go? Yep. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of theories out there, but it's very interesting that people in the ghost field, like you all, are starting to run into these creatures uh, while they're investigating. And now they're starting to swing, like, man, this stuff is real. Yeah. Uh, because they're starting to have encounters and we're finding a lot of people that trace is bringing on the show they're like oh yeah we're, we're hunting these things now too because we're out at the uh what's that real famous house everybody's camping on the lawn they made the movie out of conjuring yeah the conjuring, conjuring house conjuring they're house, having yeah. they're having visits out there with bigfoots uh throwing really? rocks and sticks at them uh hoops and hollers uh, there's places up new york people are camping they're getting tree knocks and whoops and hollers while they're out visit or visiting locations. And they're like, what the hell is that? And uh, they come on our shows and Trace is like, yeah, you believe in Bigfoot? I'm like, no. And then we introduce a couple of videos. They're like, what was that? I heard that before. Makes and they're sense. like, what? The? Yeah. And it's like flipping them out. So, yeah, we had a guy, Corbin Bentley was on and he was a, 
we showed him that video and he he, he was kind of oh oh he, he he was hell bent <laughs> when he saw that he was hell bent i mean i mean it, it, it warped his mind yeah, I'd be willing to go out and uh, and do a, a, a do a, a hunt like that if you want to. We'll come down. We've got a couple of UTVs. Yeah, we will. We'll come we down. will set it up. I don't know that I would. Uh, we'll have to see what the laws are. I don't know that I want to be out there without uh, uh, something to protect Heat, myself. Uh, let me tell you something. I, I pack heaters, brother. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. It's Kentucky, we're talking. Okay, about. I, I yeah. just didn't know. You know, every <laughs> yeah, state's I, I, I pack here, and I tell everybody. I don't tell anybody where we're going. I tell no, people no. I'm going somewhere in April, right? And yeah. I tell everybody, and I, I tell them right now, don't don't trick me, don't play pranks on me. I'm warning. No. So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Hey, Eric was so. saying, tell them about the tape, Chris. Oh, I was trying to ignore that. So oh. when, I first put up, <laughs> when I first put up these trail cameras, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how these things work and not the trail cameras. I got ones that are IR uh, motion in different types of activations, right? Uh, I, You know, chipping tape, right? Yep. I use Gorilla Tape. And when I say Gorilla Tape, I'm talking Gorilla Tape. Oh, wow. So I took that out with three rows, two two rows, and uh, I wrapped some between trees. Yeah. yeah. So if anything walked into it, you're right, now it gets hair or whatnot. And yep. uh, and I did this a few times right on a camera. You see me doing it. Yep. And then I took a whole row and unraveled it between cameras. Okay. And uh, I was afraid I was going to wake up and it's going to be all on a ball on my back porch. <laughs> so anyways, I left it out there for a little over a month and a half. And I go out there, it's all gone, even off the trees. And I was like, ah, mm -hmm. all right. D couldn't find the tape. I'm like, well, I got it on camera. I come home, pull the cards. You see me putting the tape up and you see me come back and get the cameras. Really? Wow. Who took the tape? Interesting. That cannot be explained. No, no. Now that did not make any sense, right? No, now the wind would not carry this eighty or one hundred ten yards of tape away. Yeah, because it would get caught in the bushes, yeah. the thorns, and everything. I mean, that's a long piece of tape. Yeah. If an animal would have got caught on it, I had I think nineteen cameras within this vicinity. Yeah, it would have picked up because I had cameras all the way around different heights on trees uh, in between four to six foot uh, off the ground. Nothing. Wow. And the ones that are wrapped around the tree from tree to tree. Yeah. Nothing. Huh. I could not explain that. So. Huh. No. no yeah, he, I used Gorilla Tape. It was extra sticky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not 3M. So, yes. Wow. But uh, I, I, and then that just blew my mind. I, I could not, yeah. I mean, I could not wrap my head around. It didn't make any sense. No, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. Wow. So that's crazy. Yeah, it was. So there's a, a lot of stuff out there now. You guys see the videos all the time, probably about the, uh, the UFOs and, um, you know, it's just it, everything in the paranormal the last couple of years has kind of, has really exploded. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's good in a lot of ways because the people that were once considered, lack of better words, outcast like me, yeah. you know, other people, uh, were brought into the uh, into the mainstream, which is cool. Uh, and then, like we were talking about with the uh, uh, the Bigfoot tapes, you know, there's a lot of them that are rigged. You know, we, we realize yeah. that a lot of them are authentic. Uh, same can be said for the UFOs, right? Sure. Uh, have you guys ever given any any thought into uh, what what you think about extraterrestrial life? Uh, this guy right here kind of got me into that as a little bit. But go ahead, and you you you, um, you talk about that. <clears throat> well, on my 18th birthday, a buddy of mine picked me up to take me to a party that they were throwing for me. And we were driving out in the middle of nowhere, and we were driving past this big field. There was nothing, no houses, nothing around. And all of a sudden, this green ball of light that was, like, hollow in the middle <clears throat> shot, like, right across the field. And you could feel the vibration from it, and you could hear it, like, whoa, like that, and just disappeared. And uh, oh, we both we pulled over, and we looked at each other, and I was like, you saw that? And he was like, yeah, what the hell was that? 
So we talked about it all night. And then uh, a couple months later, we were eating somewhere and a couple of our other friends happened to be camping on the other side of the town we were in. And we were all talking about UFOs and whatnot. And they were like, yeah, remember that night when we saw that green ball of light come through the sky and it like vibrated? And we were like, we saw the same thing. And it, it was literally the same day, their same night. It's crazy. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm completely vested in the whole UFO thing. I, I believe they're, they're real. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to lie. I thought there was going to be a completely different answer. <laughs> no, but that you got to be like an attorney. Never ask a question. You don't know the answer. Take. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's a, no, that's a, that, that's a, that's a cool, a cool story. A good, uh, now I never heard of an orb. Did it look like a donut? It looked, it looked like a green, like a, it was a green ball, but the center of it was like, like a something. donut. Right? Kind of like a donut. Yeah. yeah. And I it never, just, it started. Wild. Like we've seen it, like we've seen the, the, the ball of light and then it went broom, like right across the sky and just disappeared and it vibrated, like it vibrated the car and you could hear the, like the vibration. It was, it was insane. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that is. I probably wouldn't end up in a ditch in a damn tree. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I hear you. <laughs> so what are you guys getting back into the, the, the actual investigation stuff? Where are you guys going to be heading? What's your, uh, where, where are your next big locations and what is your bucket list item? So end of February, we're going back to Mackey's. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to do a Facebook live for an hour uh, before we do our, our film and do the rest of the investigation. But uh, we're bringing on, uh, we're doing a couple of different things. We're bringing on some new people um, and got a couple of different things that we want to do with that. Um, so we're kind of, I wouldn't say revamping, but I guess in a way we're, we're just, uh, recruiting a little bit and, and bringing people on for different, different things that they specialize in. So, um, so we kind of, uh, doing that. So we got Mackie's, um, and we're doing like some Paracons coming up to, um, what else we got going on? What's the next big um, place? Investigation wise. Yeah. Investigation wise. Um, we have Edinburgh and Edinburgh. Um, we want to get that's a cool yeah, place. Yeah, we want to get yeah. we want to get out to Ashmore again. Yeah, Ashmore. Yeah. Um, so what's been, your what's your bucket list place you guys really want to go to? Oh man, <laughs> one that we haven't been to. Yeah, mine's probably mine's probably like Alcatraz. I'd, I'd love to investigate Alcatraz. Yeah, that's a. Uh, for some reason, I, I, I don't, it, I'll just say it's, a, I guess it's not really a bucket list, but I really want to go as the Joliet prison. I know they're not doing it anymore, but I have a, a trigger object potentially from uh, John Wayne Gacy. Oh, no kid. Yeah, a letter that he typed out to somebody else with actually the same name, Nate. And uh, <laughs> uh, so I want to see if, and he signed it too. So. Um, not that I'm proud of that, of what he's done, but to channel, you know, spirits and things like that would be, uh, interesting. I, I just think that the dynamic of, uh, of that is, is interesting, but obviously what they've done was absolutely horrible. So, so in a way I don't really want to bring light to it, but I guess I am right now. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, Alcatraz, Alcatraz would be good. I've been there to Alcatraz, but I've never investigated. So I think that would be. Probably a place we'd like to go. We gotta go out to the west coast a little bit more. That would be cool. Yeah, we've been to Nevada, so that was pretty cool to go out there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And what have you physically seen? That's they want to know. Wow, um, I physically watched a, a K two meter slide across the gravestone. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't I squeezed just me. that bottle on that yeah. one. I saw that go through your mind. That's creepy. It wasn't just me. It was it was me and three other people. So I, I I'm not crazy. It, it and you heard it like like slide across the uh, headstone. Um yeah, I've what I seen was uh I watched a door, an old school heavy fire door completely slam shut and uh slam open in front of us. And then for like 10 seconds, it then slammed back shut, breaking the hinge. It wasn't, 
so what had happened was there's a loud noise. We heard a woman's voice and it was, uh, then there was a loud noise outside. I'm like, is there like a storm or something? Um, the door flew open and then it slammed shut. And so I was like, okay, well maybe it got really windy out. So we went out there, but there was a charcoal, like a Coleman little charcoal grill that was used. If the wind could blow open that door, that charcoal grill should have been gone, and it would it hadn't moved. Nothing was still mm-hmm. sitting there. So, wow. yeah. Right. So how many? Uh, you brought up a good point earlier about uh, you guys are expanding a little bit with with people. How many? How many people are on your team right now? Uh, well, officially, yeah, future. Yeah. Okay. We got a couple of others that are here. Well, Caitlin is a new addition, and so is Jenny. Caitlin uh, is brand new jenny's been doing this for a while but mm-hmm. uh um they're brand new to this or to the team so um but for the for the longest time it's been just mike and myself what about um i know you guys you guys are able to you feel things around you stuff like that what about the medium side of it have you guys ever uh encountered or experienced anything with uh, or utilized mediums in any way shape or form when you're you've done a hunt hunt anywhere um we haven't necessarily utilized the medium i mean we know quite a few um that's something that we definitely might do uh in the future here soon um but uh yeah we never really investigated invested like we've we kind of did i guess with scotty with Uh, uh, scotty rourke is yeah we did i'm sorry mm -hmm. scotty rourke is a psychic medium we did an, uh, an investigation with him um geez We've, That's my bad. I mean, we've in, we've investigated with them, not for our purpose, but we've investigated with a few like Patty Negri. And, yeah, with Patty. Um, and... Yeah. Did you a... did you notice anything uh, like different about their style and stuff that maybe made the uh, made that investigation go from maybe not much uh, evidence or anything like that to hey, I got a lot of stuff coming up now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Like a lot of, uh, it's kind of cool when you, you know, they, they, like you get uh, them saying, I have a feeling of this or this is what I see. And then you get, you get, um, oh, what's the word? You get validation. Validation with equipment or something yeah. else showing the same thing that they had just said mm-hmm. prior. So that's always pretty cool. We've experienced that mm-hmm. with, you know, with Scotty and with Patty for sure. Have you guys ever utilized the uh, the Estes method? I mean, I never have. I'm just curious. You guys have? I we have not. We we know quite a few people who do it. We haven't done it personally, um, and we just I, I don't know. There's no real reason we haven't. It's just not something that we have done, and um, so you know we let the we've done it where people that we've been with have done it, but not personally. No, I don't. Uh, I've never done. Have you done an Estes? For? No, I mean I've I've tried it. Okay. Um, just not my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. So about you, Grizzly? Did you ever do it? Yeah, it's spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. Yeah. I, I kind of had the right person to deal with. Yeah, I, I think that's important. Yeah, you do. At, at Edinburgh, uh, I, I saw it there. Another group we were with, me and my wife went up there, and and they did. And and you're right, it is kind of spooky. Even just watching, you're like, well, what the heck's going mm-hmm. on? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so if you guys had any encouraging words for, for newer people coming out there, what, what's your advice? What would you give them to people just starting out and thinking they're on the edge of maybe, maybe I should get into this, but I'm kind of scared. Maybe I shouldn't, you know, stuff like that. What would you tell them? Uh, don't do it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> run. No. Um, I, for me personally, it'd be like, uh, um, if you're going to do it, Go into it with an open mind. Go. So when we investigate, we're, we're very lighthearted. We're not, we don't go in there like all serious, like we're going to get answers and yell at spirits and swear at them and anything like that. Cause like, I look at it like this. If I were to talk to you and I swore at you, you don't want to talk to me? Probably not. So, you know, we, we try to respect, you know, the spirits and, and um, just be respectful. Be respectful and go into it with an open mind, and open heart. And um, you're going to get a lot more than if you go in with a closed mind, closed heart, you know, closed. Uh, and, and it'll take a while. Like, you're not going to get stuff everywhere you go. There's going to be times where 
maybe your energy's off or somebody else's energy's off that's with you. And then you don't get as much as maybe you would, but, but don't get frustrated. Uh, just, just, you know, continue and, and learn and talk to other groups. You know, the whole peer, peer unity thing is, is a thing. Like we've, I've learned things from other people that I would not have thought of um, and vice versa. So, um, you know, there's a, it's definitely a thing. And I, I've just experienced a lot of that, but I'm talking too much. Go ahead. That's, well, you I have just that you took everything I was going to say, so uh, I, I have nothing. Yeah, boom, that just <laughs> happened. No, <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> you know, we ask we ask a lot of people that, and and the cool thing about the paranormal field is, I would say 99.9% .9 the first thing out of their mouth is respect. Be respectful mm -hmm. of each other. Yeah. Right, Grizz? Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's yeah, what it should be. Too, yeah. You, yeah. you got to be, and, and you know, one thing that that we all know there there are some groups out there that might uh give give a negative image of yeah. the field but man like 95 97 percent yeah. mm -hmm. of us of us out there are really really trying to to make a uh, legit not business because nobody's in it i don't think anybody's in it for the money <laughs> no <laughs> but we're all in it too it's almost like a big giant science experiment you yeah. know but let's see what we can do. What what we can? Who can make the coolest gadget? Just like what you held up a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. I have a camera that a buddy made for me, which is pretty cool. Uh, so to me, it's 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 always that's this is awesome. And to me, the newer people getting in, it, it, you know, join up, get in there, and and yeah. and just make sure you're with the right groups. Don't conjure anything up. Don't do mm -hmm. anything that. You know, uh, yeah. make sure you have somebody experienced with you because you don't want to bring up the wrong stuff, right, Gary? Yes, <laughs> Absolutely. Always keep her holy water crucifixes by. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, we've been told stories about, uh, you know, uh, people and and you know they're talking with or with the owners of houses and stuff that they had, may have had a group come up there and 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 investigate it, charge them a lot of money, and and basically just tell them you know anything and, and it's yeah. all basically ball, you know bald face lies yeah. you know and it doesn't help these people out the people that are really uh needing needing assistance right i yeah. mean basically we're, we're out there to investigate and, and have a good time and and figure out what's going on but when we're doing private hunts i don't know about you guys when i'm doing a private hunt i'm there to try to help that person out figure out what the heck's going on yeah absolutely and the other thing is like the people got to be careful too they don't uh stir up the the paranormal pot or the spirits in there so that you leave and then they're stuck with these spirits that are like oh these guys can actually hear us mm -hmm. and see or, or whatever and the next thing you know they call you and be like it's gotten worse <laughs> since you guys have been here so you definitely got to know you got to know what you're doing but yeah absolutely definitely yeah. definitely yeah oh yeah what what are you thinking chris yeah how does everybody find you and follow you now yeah, so we're on Facebook. Uh, just we are paranormal. Uh, we're on we're on YouTube as well, um, and uh, you can look us up. I can. Uh, it's just we are paranormal. Uh, we're on Instagram and TikTok. TikTok. Yes, we're on TikTok as well. So um, we try to put out stuff, uh, different things. We have a, a little show we call the Bugsy Box Chronicles, where we use the Bugsy Box basically exclusively and uh and try to get answers for certain things so that's been pretty interesting um, um but yeah we're on facebook uh just everything is we are paranormal so awesome well thank yeah, you yeah i want to see how that that box look about that box works i'd like to yeah. check you guys out and, yeah uh, so definitely yeah. The, the one, we have one episode out and that was at the lizzie borden grave okay. um and so uh we're working on episode two that should be out actually this week yet mm -hmm. so good yeah. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you again. And from coast to coast around the world, we'll catch you tonight at nine. See you later. Thanks, gentlemen. guys. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.
Thank you.